Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson, and I'm joined by the Mighty Joe Yeager. Mighty Joe, man, beautiful day here outside the USA, which is apropos because the Red Raiders are rolling, man. They're in the Sweet 16, but how are you, Mighty Joe? Yeah, man, uh, doing good. Uh, as you can see, I'm not dressed for Boston. <laughs> they, got, they got some uh, cold, funky weather yep. blowing it up northeast, but man, down here it is uh, mighty gorgeous and a little bit on the hot side. Not complaining. Yeah, absolutely. It, it warmed up, man. It warmed up. Uh, and even like right now, the wind's not even blowing, which is kind of a like, well, it's not, not, not kind of. It is. It's a rare occurrence, yeah. especially in the springtime. It is. It's damn strange. It is. Uh, it's, kind of ominous actually <laughs> but yeah the red raiders are in the sweet 16 take on purdue friday night which will be tonight by the time this airs uh you know nine o'clock central time ten o'clock eastern in the sweet 16 looking to make their first to win and make their first appearance ever in the elite eight which would be amazing and our first question comes from tech freak uh, who wants to know how are is the basketball team getting to boston and when can we expect them to get there well we uh we know that they did take off Wednesday morning. They left a little earlier than usual to get to get ahead of some bad weather. Uh, but they by Wednesday early after afternoon they arrived in Boston and they're there, man. They're they are in Boston. They're ready to battle with the Boilermakers. Okay. Battling uh, the Boilermakers in Beantown. Yeah, <laughs> wow, great, yeah. there you go. Peter Ivy wants to know, in our opinion, who wins the national championship at this point and how far does Tech advance? Uh, to me, Villanova looks like the class of the field right now, um, which puts <laughs> which kind of yeah. puts a certain limitation on what Tech Tech's does. Tech, uh, I think Tech does manage to get by Purdue. Oh, you do now. Yes, okay. I do. I, I I think they win that game. Um, and uh, but uh, probably getting past uh, Villanova is maybe just a bridge too far. But you know, I wouldn't rule it out either. All right, I'm not sure. not. I mean, but 16 seed can beat Virginia. Then, sure. I mean, yeah, anything can happen. Right. Uh, yeah, that would be nowhere close to a 16 beating a one Tech beating Villanova. That could happen. That could happen. But yeah, I think uh, Villanova probably wins it. Uh, but the, the Duke is looking mighty stout yeah. too. That, they scare me. Uh, and at this time of the year, I mean, talent comes to the fore, which means you got to look out for Kentucky too. Yeah. Extremely young team, of course, but extremely talented, and they're beginning to, to come together a little bit. So. Uh, Keep an eye on them too. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I have actually picked in my bracket. Joe can attest to because he's in one of in one of my or our group. Uh, I have Texas Tech beating Purdue to go to the Elite Eight and, and then falling to Virgi to uh, Villanova, who I have winning it all. Good competition. I think Tech will go far. I think Villanova is the team to beat. I, no, nothing's changed from my bracket from when I filled it out before, which is crazy because a lot's happened. You know. All right, now it's time for the over-under game from Jobbers. First one is Tech needs to shoot 45% from the field to be Purdue. I'm going to go ahead and say under on that. Yeah, I mean, Tech's got other ways to skin that right. cat, so uh, yeah, under. Purdue's hurt big man plays five minutes Friday, under. Yeah, under. Yeah, they, I think they probably try to play him a little bit, but I don't think he can go long. Tech has two players drafted in the 2018 NBA draft. Uh, <laughs> go, yeah, on the spot here. Uh, I'm going to go under. Uh, Keenan definitely goes. He may even sneak into the tail end of the first round the way he's playing. Uh, Zaire, I'm going to go ahead and say that he comes back. But, hey, it's a, it's a tough deal. He could go. Well, Zach. No, I, I, I don't think Zach gets drafted. But uh, he, he's going to be making money somewhere playing basketball. No question about it. I agree completely under. All right. Uh, Tech baseball finishes second in the Big 12. I'm going to go over. Uh, I'm still, uh, still bullish on that team, man. Even though they've had some struggles, I think they – they get it done. Yeah, that was obviously a tough opening series in Waco, but they're coming off, you know, some really tough series out in Kentucky. So I think they get it back together, and I do think they win. So I'm going to go over two. I'm not just going to let, you know, one week basically or one and a half weeks change how I feel about them. Uh, TJ Vasher has a thousand yards receiving this fall. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go under just because until he shows me that he's not going to be dropping too many passes, uh, I'm a little bit concerned. So under. Yeah, the thousand yard receivers really generally come from the inside receivers in, in Kingsbury's offenses and then there's so much like I, I like Vasher a lot but and I think he's going to be he's going to have a really great season but also you have concerns about the quarterbacks so it's just too much as far as if man if, you know my life depended on it I would definitely say under all right Tech runs the ball 45 percent of the time this fall you had some interesting stats recently about how much they actually run the ball last season yeah I think it was something like 52 48 yeah. uh 
So there's a lot, there are a lot yeah, more ballots than I think people realize. Exactly, exactly. So I'll I'll go over on that. Probably not a whole lot, but somewhat. It's still hard for me to do that. Even though I buy that, I'm still gonna have to go under just because you know what I mean. Like even when you see them in practice, they don't run the ball as much as you. You know what I mean? Like they're still they're still are what they are. You know what I mean? So I, I'm gonna have to go under. Great, great over under. Thank you so much, Job Burrs. All right, next question comes from Juicebox. Who is the next basketball recruit to commit since Brooks committed to USC? Yeah, I, you know, it's funny is everybody was saying Washington, but really when you look at Jaron uh, Brooks, basically it was USC, and then they had kind of the scandal, and they went, then he went, I can't remember where Penn it was. State, Penn, was it? Yeah, something like that. Rutgers. Was Rutgers. it Rutgers? And then, but then when everything got clear of USC, he went back. So it's not as outlandish as you'd think. Uh, yeah, but I never thought Tech was really in it. Now, Frankie Policelli, our man, our, our uh, you know, Paisan up from, from New York. Now, on the other hand, 6'8", uh, a forward, a lot like uh, Kayvon Moore, actually. But, uh, man, yeah, both of those guys, serious weapons. Uh, face up four, really talented. Kind of like what I was talking about in the basketball preview earlier this week about Vincent Edwards, kind of that kind of guy, who I think everybody wants. Uh, can do a little bit of everything. He is expected to visit whenever tech season is over close ar around that time. So um, in the next month, we're going to be hearing some things about tech finishing off this class, which, which I expect them to do well. Now, a lot of them, the main guys are already where they're going to going to be or have either signed or, or, or firmly committed. But there are some guys like Policelli who, I, who Tech has been on and recruited hard, who I think they have as good a shot as anybody in the country. Bruce Lee, 44, wants to know the impact that Colin Hill and Tony Jones will have on Texas Tech's defense in 2018. What do you think? He, they're in the linebacker room now. Yeah, <laughs> right. That, line, that, so. that, that position has been moved to the right. linebacker room. Yeah. Uh, by big impact. A big impact. I mean, Colin Hill just got better and better as the season went along and uh, began to live up to that hype, yes. you know, coming out of Notre Dame. So that was great to see. And Tony Jones was a guy who made dynamic plays yeah. off and on all throughout the season. Uh, so if he can, becomes more consistent, uh, which, you know, with a year in the system yeah. uh, and coming adjusting. Juco too. Sure, sure, coming from the JUCOs. Uh, I could expect to see that. That could be a nasty one-two punch. Yeah, absolutely. I loved the way Hill came on last year. He was what we want, what we expect him to be in 2016. So he was very good. Him and Eli Howard on the on the edge actually make a very good one-two combo. Both and they're and they're they're both stout against the run and can get some pressure. Colin Hill got more pressure and did a lot more things for you, I think, than he gets credit for last year. Um, now he could come on even progress even more next year. Then yeah, he could be really good. Like you said about Tony Jones, I mean, even if he just brings you just a different kind of look than maybe Colin Hill, because Colin Hill could be he's proven he can play down in and down he could play heavy snaps you know and then last year he proved he could play well and tony jones could just come in and provide like you said some dynamic plays then they, heck they have one heck of a one-two combo there it's pretty exciting great grad says seems kingsbury is becoming more open in the media is beard rubbing off on him wow. you know i i'm not so sure that maybe that, that kingsbury is that much more open than he than he was this time last spring now he did our radio show but Joe sure surely doesn't want to hear any more about this, but there was a lot of drama behind the scenes with that, which you think would be simple, but I uh, know he graciously came on our show. I think he he's been good all spring. I mean, he's still going to give you boilerplate stuff as a coach because that's just his personality on some things. But overall, I think yeah, I mean he's been pretty open. Yep, yeah, sure, but uh, I mean uh, Kingsbury doesn't strike me as a guy who's just going to change a whole heck of right, a lot. Yeah. You know, I mean he's. He's probably experienced quite a bit of pressure to change in some yeah. ways. Uh, and, you know, he's done little things here and there, but ultimately he is what he is. And most of us are, you what? know, um, it's, it's human nature. So uh, I'm not seeing a great deal of change, and I don't expect to see a great deal of change in the future either. Right. Once Big 12 conference play begins, I expect him to still be, we're day to day on like 90% of the stuff. And you know what, I don't blame him. It is, like you said, he is who he is. Texan wants the over under on the Big 12 having at least two teams in the Final Four. I'm gonna go ahead and just jump out there and I'm, they're gonna have zero teams in the Final Four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I didn't know for sure exactly how to interpret this, but what I, I came up with is the number 15, 15% a chance uh, that, that two or more Big 12 teams get really? into the Final Four. I just 15 and one five, not 50, 15. Right. Uh, I mean, because I, obviously, I mean, there's not one team, including Kansas, that you could say is even remotely a slam dunk to get there. And then you got, uh, I mean, Kansas State, which is probably generally regarded as the weakest team in the tournament right now. And then you got Tech and West Virginia in the same bracket. 
So right. you're going to get one out of there maximum. So it's uh, it's pretty unlikely. Yeah, well, I mean, let's see. Kansas is with what, Duke? I think Duke's going to go out of that. Mm -hmm. Kentucky is with Kansas State. I like Kentucky to beat Kansas State. And I think Villanova wins the, wins the bracket that Tech and West Virginia are in. So that's just the way I see it. Uh, you know, I hope. Obviously, Texas Tech proves me wrong. I think Tech's going to get a shot at Villanova. I think both Tech and West Virginia, obviously West Virginia is, are going to get a shot at Villanova. But I guess I'm just that much of a believer uh, in, in Nova th this year. I think they're just a really – just yeah, out of all the teams, I, I never thought Virginia – I didn't have Virginia going to the Final Four, but I thought Villanova was the clear-cut best team going into the tournament. And that hadn't changed with what I've, what I've seen so far. Although I will say, I'm impressed with the way West Virginia is playing right now. Sure. I mean, they, they're, they've surprised me. Yeah, they probably me. beat them since I said that. You know, I mean? <laughs> you know, but I mean, traditionally they haven't been so terribly great in the tournament, but they're playing maybe their best basketball of the year right now. So that could be an interesting game. Yeah, and I, I would say the Big 12 is already, it's already mission accomplished. You got, you know, 40% of your conference into the Sweet 16. Yeah. You know, great league. No, no one's going to leave saying, oh, Big 12, you know, they had a horrible, they, another bad showing in the tournament. That's just not the case. It's it's already been mission accomplished as far as their performance. Now, if they get one or two teams in the Final Four, yeah, then you really got to be like, start flexing. Big 12, you know, <laughs> forget SEC, SEC. It'll be Big 12, Big 12. So, uh, I don't know if they'll be that obnoxious or not, but you know what I mean? <laughs> that is kind of an it SEC thing. Be. Yeah, probably so. All right. All right, we got a food question to wrap it up from Cobe Honies. This is a good one. He yeah, says, yeah. Uh, you have one item you have to eat for every meal for the rest of your life. What's it going to be? Now, this is kind of tricky because, you know, like, I like fried chicken, but if you eat fried chicken every meal, you're not, your life's not going to be very long. So <laughs> what'd you go with, my Joe? Yeah, excellent question. Well, I mean, it's got to be something A that you like. Yeah. B, I think it's got to be something that kind of like doesn't clash with everything else right. that you, that, you know, uh, that's, that's on your plate there. So, you know, salad. Yeah. Salad. I mean, salad goes with everything. I mean, it goes with Mexican. You can have it with Mexican. You can, I love Indian food. You can go with Indian, uh, Italian, uh, Cajun, just basic American salad. And you get to vary it up the salad, I presume, with some extra different Indian ingredients and ingredients, different dressings yeah. and so forth. So that's a good one. That's uh, that's what I'm going with. That's tough to beat. Uh, I don't think it's healthy too. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, well, I think, like I said, it's going to be kind of hard. You can't eat French fries every meal. First, it tastes like crap and it'll kill you. So uh, I, mine would be fresh green apples green apples never sound bad to me like i can eat some fried chicken and eat a, and eat a green apple or i can eat uh, even like some breakfast and then eat a green apple and be okay so and i'm not saying i wouldn't get tired of it but uh like, I, honestly i would get tired of salad too but i get but you get i get it if you're gonna eat something all the time it's gotta be something that always tastes crisp to me and i to me uh, I really like green apples. I'm a, I'm a big fan of green apples. Yeah, I have a green apple just about every day for lunch, come to think well, of it. So I'm go. halfway there. Oh, there you Boy, go. if this scenario comes out, you know, i got to just <laughs> fall back on Jared's suggestion and I'm golden, you know? Yeah, you know, I actually like yours better than mine, so there you go. <laughs> All right. Great stuff from y'all. Great stuff from you, Mighty Joe, as always. And until next time.